Um, and then, yeah, you should like lower the volume because you can hear me. Uh, do you see the Deno pictures? Do you see the, the screen with the Deno? Benji? Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah, I can check that with, with Benji. Um, so, one second. Okay, eight years ago, during my final workshop project in the networking class in college, the professor walks into the door and tell us about this new platform called Node.js and it was about JavaScript on the server, which was strange as hell because I was doing C++ in Java at the time and I was a bit biased toward JavaScript, especially on the server side. And by the end of the talk, I learned about web sockets, dynamic typing, async operations. Then I did some more research and I approached the students I was doing the workshop with and convinced them to change the project to Node.js. It was great fun, great people and community, got a lot of feedback and it was a chance to really like tear down all the information you know and kind of rebuild your view of the system. Um, a little bit about me. One second. I am Don Tzu. I've been developing code for around a decade. You can catch me on Twitter. You can also catch me on GitHub next time I'll put it on. In the past, I was a developer at Bit.dev and uh, Wix.com Research, and I'm starting a contract in Tikal very soon. I have a great family, uh, and uh, with my partner Zila, two girls and two cats, and I have a very strange hobby. Uh, so without further ado, let's go to the lecture itself. So today, I actually called the lecture <coughs> Uh, <coughs> sorry, I actually called the lecture. Uh, oh, Benji, can you get me a glass of water? Sure, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, I actually called the lecture uh, uh, Import Math because knowing is half the battle. But right now, if I would have to rename it, I would call it Import Math by Example. We're going to discuss the Deno way it's applicable, but it, most of the things I'm going to say today are applicable to the browser. Thank you very much, my friend. And it's about basically import map is how you handle dependencies. Deno doesn't have a package JSON when you publish a model and you need to handle dependencies somehow. So that's exactly what the import map come uh, to solve. I think in Chrome, it's still behind uh, a flag in Canary. Benji will probably correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and the, but we're gonna go on the spill of how it works in Deno. And first, just as a reminder, for those of us that don't remember, um, in Hebrew, of course, uh, how does ESM look like? So ESM looks like something like this, and in Deno, it is not pretty, my friends. It is not pretty because uh, basically, in order to, um, to to get an import, you're gonna have to have this long URL, and it has advantages because you understand where the model comes from, and you can use basically any kind of file server to host your model. And right now here, what I have is just like this example taken from the Deno.land website. And if I will get into it, I can run it and it gives me hello world. It doesn't, it didn't compile the example like it normally does because I already ran this example before to make sure they're working. And that's how it looks like without the import map. But we kind of like coming from the common JS system, it's we're not used to like this color ts thing and we're not used to this whole url and i would really love if it, it won't be there so i'm going to show you uh, uh, a sim the same example but just like with with an import map and now this looks sane this looks familiar and if i want to run it with there's a certain way to do the pointer but if I want to run it, then I can go deno run minus a because I don't want to mess around right now with all the permission models and then unstable and then import map equals wait, 
import map equals boom and then just run my main file for some reason uh, because it's called with and not main oh okay okay so let's try this again so i'm running minus n to allow everything minus minus unstable because the import map feature is behind an unstable flag i have an import map json but we're going to look at it in a second and i have the main dot uh, and i have the main.ts file just to make sure it's called uh, it's called with and i have an error trust me it ran just before who can find the error all the new deno developers uh, let me check where i am okay uh, I think I know the issue. Da, 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 da. I'm not sure exactly, but this is how the import map looks like. I'm going to check the arrow, the arrow later, and I'll show you the example works. But this is how an import map JSON kind of looks like. We have the exact same import statement that we had before. But now we have it in a nifty file and we can give it a namespace and know how to name it. And this allows us to first get rid of the file type specifier and get rid of this long URL and the boilerplate code. And we can also like kind of put all the imports of the same, if the same model is imported across many models in our project, we can just have stick that long URL in one place and figure out where it comes from. So uh, on another use case, uh, just to, it's important to know that like you can put like you have HTTPS you can put you can put file you can also do HTTP you must have the unstable flag like you saw and now let's go and to the second example and I really hope this work and let the demo gods be with me okay so um, fallback so let's say we're, we're, we want to like import say hello world function from the hello model and we kind of like modeled it before, but we have this uh, option in the spec uh, to, to have an array of, of uh, possibilities. Now Benji, because you're the only one which can actually talk right now, what's going to happen when I run this example, assuming the demo works and it doesn't fuck up? What, it's gonna map hello to that file and run the code. No, <laughs> but I, I was I was setting you up because this this is going to be in Deno. Part of the thing is I want to emphasize that a lot of the stuff in Deno are still unstable. This entire feature is behind unstable and may change, and they haven't really uh, uh, managed to 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 implement multi-address mappings are not supported yet. So you're gonna, if you're working with Deno, you're gonna get a lot of those. It's in the spec and I even think that it works already in the browser from what I know, but it doesn't work yet with Deno. If you want to create a pull request, I read the Rust file today and the previous talk was very interested and I'm wondering how I can get into Rust, but uh, it's a long 1000 lines of uh, code, the Rust file with a lot of tests in it. And if you want to change it and make a, a multi-address mapping complete, you should go ahead and do it. I plan to do it. And if you want to collab on that, feel free. So let's go to the third example. Hashing. Bam. We have hashing. So the point here basically is on a lot of cases, let me just close my previous example. So I can go back to this. In a lot of cases, when we pu actually publish models, we kind of get the content of the model, hash it, grab a few bytes off of it, and then overload the information on the name. It's for caching validation purposes. 
but and then when if we're not using the import map, the statement we see here is going to be in our source code. And then if we change a, what's going to happen? Uh, uh, just to, to show you the example, main takes from a, a takes from b. So let's say we change b. What's going to, and we're not using import map. So imagine that instead of like you know. Uh, uh, having B here, we have the full qualified URL with the hash inside, and we change the content of B. What's going to happen? We're going to need to change the content of A because the import is going to change because the hash changed. We're going to need to change the content of main because the content of, of A changed because the import statement changed. And then main. So we get this like cascading effect throughout our code base, and we don't want to bust our cache. Now, some people would say that maybe uh, caching is not that important in Deno, but we do use Docker build. We do want to keep changes in our code locally. Uh, and sometimes we want to shorten the time of serverless functions when they go up. I feel this is a very useful feature just to see another cool use case. And for the hell of it, I will try and see if it works. Hello world. So it said hello world in hashing. That's amazing. I'm impressed that it works. So right now, let's go to the scoping example. What happens? I have main. Main uses A, but in the, my import map, I have AV2, and you can see here I have AV2 and AV1, and that's perfectly valid when you are running version into your models and you want to say this specific file path or URL runs to V2, but main is kind of old and it still uses V1. And I want the way to cheat and kind of change that and kind of use the, the older version. So, but I'm mapping to V2. So a way to escape that is basically using scopes. I'm basically saying that in main, you're going to have to use uh, A from version 1. If you see that, you're going to have to use it from version 1. So instead of saying hello world version 2, it's going to say hello v1, I hope. Let's go into scoping and then go then around. Minus unstable import map, and then I specify the import map JSON. You have to specify it, by the way, if I haven't said it before. And it said, hello, V2. How very disappointing. How very disappointing. I'm going to have to recheck that example and get back to you. If someone is interested, uh, I'll, I'll show that to them later. And here to, to the most like interesting example in my mind is there's a lot of things going on here just let me make sure i delete the correct file move to trash and and now we're going to see some like a bit more deno code so let me hide the non-important details one of the suggestions one of the suggested workflows with import map and it's very applicable in the browser on the script tag. If you run a script tab that generates a dynamic import map before you call any import statement, you can basically do like kind of like feature detection. And I was thinking about that and how it's applicable in the Dino sense. So I wrote a function that basically generates an import map JSON. And this function basically says, am I, am I running on Linux or am I running on Mac because I'm refusing to use Windows? And, and if I'm running on Mac, it's going to say, hello, Mac. And if I'm running on Linux, it's going to say, hello, Linux. So just to go over the code, I call this function. I get an, an import map object, a little bit of file type, file path uh, magic. I write a, a JSON synchronously to the file path of the import map. And then I do deno run. We'll get back to a second. I get the output from the STDR from the command and copy it to the main process so we can see 
it's piped. And then I removed the, the, the file. I, I, when I tested before, I went like this. So that's why we still have the import map. So next execution, this bootstrap file would be able to redetect the feature in case something changed. In case, I don't know, the OS changed. In case maybe we're not checking for OS, we're checking for special driver, peripherals. Denno has a lot of things when it talks about application development. And so, I think it's a very valid example. So another thing, uh, let me just do this. And then we're going to go again, then on around minus a, minus this unstable import map. And then I'm going to run my bootstrap file. And that bootstrap file is basically going to run the main function. And it errored. That is unbelievable. I just ran the, all the examples before I started, but it should say hello Mac, and this imports from hello. Let me see if I can quickly fix the arrow. No such file. User screwballer. Okay. Uh, oh, I think I know what the issue is. Dun -dun. Let me remove this and perhaps. That's very annoying. I just checked all my example. But what, what it should do is basically run uh, with the import map. Did I change anything in this file? Let me check its status. Dynamic TS. Git. Uh, you go away. Git. Git reset. And it's just my headphones died on me. One second. Let me turn on the volume. Yeah, please do. Uh, Git reset dynamic TS. So, sorry to interrupt, but uh, maybe reload. Maybe. No, so it's fine. The I'm going to give it one attempt. Okay, but what it what it should do is basically say hello Mac, and not hello Linux, and just to tie up the lecture. So uh, we saw that import map in Deno and how to use it, and we saw several use cases which are valid for it. If you if you have any further question, you can email me. You can ask now. I think Deno is another great chance to look at the problem in a new way and kind of relearn the system again in the same way I did eight years ago. And I want to thank you for your time. Woo! Awesome. Thank you. Uh, let me just mute you real quick so there was no echo. Uh, thank you so much, Doron, for the talk. Uh, really cool. I see some people had. Uh, Questions, let's take them later. The file is deleted. I don't really understand that very much. Uh, so just a fun tidbit about import maps, super interesting feature. I think they're going to take over in Node 2 and in browsers because like everyone wants a standard way uh, to do uh, like this sort of mapping. There is a huge argument between two opposing camps. There is like the, the guy bad for the SPM camp where he sees import maps as like this whole encompassing dynamic thing. And the other camp is Dominic that sees import maps as like this immutable final thing where you have one import map and like they're not dynamic. So I, it's really interesting to see how like import maps will shape out in the future. Definitely something we're gonna see in Deno and uh, otherwise. Awesome. <laughs> and it works now, by the way. 